Valdosta, Mr. Mark. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, while this particular PowerPoint is coming up, this is two requests from the city of Valdosta by the same applicant for the same property. It is a rezoning request and also a conditional use. And as described in your packets and as we talked about at the work session, um, the order of events is paramount here um, in terms of the rezoning needs to be acted upon first. And then if city council approves the rezoning, then the conditional use becomes eligible. But your task this evening is to render a recommendation on both of those um, independently to the city council. So the first request is rezoning. In the PowerPoint, I have combined the maps and the pictures and everything together because it is the same property. Um, I think differences, we would include a floor plan with the conditional use. So the first request is to rezone 0.37 acres from single family residential R10 to multifamily residential RM. Um, property is located at 704 Holly Drive. This is along the north side of the street on the third lot in from North Lee Street. Uh, this property will look familiar to you. We had a request last fall uh, for a personal care home that was expanding from three to four persons by the same applicant. Um, that is still the existing use of the property. Um, it is built as a single family residence, pretty good size. You may recall it's a two-story portion in the back, um, but it is currently functioning as a personal care home uh, with staff that operate the facility um, on a 24-hour schedule. There's no one permanently residing there other than the, the clients of the facility. Um, subject neighborhood around it is typical of what you would find as R10. All of the lots are built. They are single family homes and it's what staff considers to be a stable neighborhood. Um, the next slide shows the aerial imagery. You see the rooftops, um, the urban forest of the neighborhood. Um, the larger rooftop to the north, that is the Serenity Church um, there along Lee Street. That is on the corner of the street to the north. It's not really part of this neighborhood, it's just adjacent to it. Um, but it is also zoned R10. Um, next slide, character area. Um, this is right in the middle of a well-established residential character area which allows all forms of residential zoning as a possibility. It is not automatic and the applicant is requesting the maximum allowable in that character area which is RN zoning, uh, which is single family on up through duplexes and even to multifamily itself. Um, in your packet is a comparison. I've given you a chart that shows the allowable uses in R10 as well as the allowable uses in RM, um, minimum lot sizes and so forth. It is back and toward the back of it after the maps and the site plan. But as you recall, R10 zoning is a minimum lot size of 10,000 square feet. RM has different lot size minimums depending on the type of use. Uh, for a house at 6,000, for townhouses it's at 7,500 for at least three units, one building. Duplex is 9,000, and then multifamily is 20,000. And this is one of the key points here. The subject property, I think, is 15,600 square feet. It is large enough for a duplex. It is large enough for a three-unit townhouse building. Not quite large enough for multifamily, which would be like a three-unit apartment building. However, if the applicant or a future owner were to add some additional land to this parcel, even if it had split zoning, it could conceivably do multifamily. Um, you see the setbacks are a little bit different between R10 and RM, but I think of greater importance is the portion below that, where you see some of the uses that are allowed by right in RM that are not allowed in R10, and even some additional uses that are allowed by conditional use in RM. Um, there's two levels of zoning difference between R10 and RM. There's a category in between that is R6, um, but for the applicant's proposal, they really need our end zoning here, if not higher. It is not eligible for any higher. Um, the second part is a request for conditional use for a larger uh, personal care home to move it from the family size category into the group size category. That's the intermediate. Uh, remember, our personal care homes are just like daycare centers. They're small, medium, and large. Um, the small size, we call family personal care, is up to six persons. Um, the group is from 7 to 15, and then the congregate facilities are 16 and higher. The applicant is proposing 7, which is just over that threshold into the group category, um, which puts it into a different land use type. Um, 
into the middle size and it requires a higher zone. Um, all of the issues surrounding the conditional use are very similar to what was reviewed and approved last fall, except it is now a larger facility, almost double the size in terms of number of residents than what it was approved for last fall, from four to seven. Um, but in this case, with these two together, the paramount consideration is the rezoning for R10 to RN. If you go back to the zoning map, you see that as a C of R10, there is no RN zoning nearby or anywhere around here. There's some RP on the corner of Lee Street, uh, which is separated out of this part of the neighborhood, but that is the Gerlock Dance Studio. But it is a single family zoning pattern, a single family land use pattern, and the applicant is proposing multifamily zoning on one parcel. Um, the layman's term for this is spot zoning. And that is something that's not illegal, but it is very, very poor practice um, and just a bad idea in terms of land use patterns, and particularly if you're trying to protect and conserve a neighborhood. Um, so with that in mind, staff is recommending denial of the rezoning request after finding that type of spot zoning request inconsistent with comprehensive plan and in particular, our standards for exercise of zoning power, which are there in your packet. Um, and then when we get to it, also the conditional use request. Um, seven person <laughs> personal care home in a different category is a little more institutional in size and staff's opinion than the family personal care, although the conditional use staff would find more palatable than the zoning change. Um, but that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. So, just looking at, at the lot size, they're, they're going to have 16,000 square foot lot. And on my notes from last week, did you say that the personal care for 7 to 15 would require 4,000 square feet? Well, the personal care home actually requires a one acre minimum for that category, unless it is approved sort of as an override by city council. But on its face, that's what it requires. Um, if city council approves the rezoning and the conditional use, but does not address the lot size issue, then the applicant would then have to seek a variance. Uh, we had talked with the applicant knowing that there was two, possibly three applications, each of these costing five or $600, no guarantee that they'll be approved. Uh, the choice was made to submit the rezoning and conditional use together, since that goes to city council. Variances would go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, and there they would have to plead hardship as to why the facility of that size should be allowed on an acre or smaller than a one acre lot. So my follow-up question to that is, um, to, to, to make it to the seven plus category that, that we're looking at tonight, would you allow a auxiliary structure in the back on the same lot? You can have an auxiliary structure, but it doesn't change the use of the property. It's seven persons of a personal care home, whether that be on one building or several. It's still one facility. They are eligible up to six persons. So, what, what do you mean by what? But you said up to three townhouses on this lot. So that if the house were demolished, you could fit the dimensions are such, the land area is such so that three townhouses three could fit. Would they be three standalone? They would need to be attached townhouses or as a cluster villa so, that we would call single family attached. So I'm just curious for my benefit here. If, if, if there was an attached auxiliary building list on the hallway, would that be acceptable? No. no. It's still one one unit, one facility. Still a personal care home. Right. Personal care right. home is not tied to number of dwelling units. It's tied to number of people. So adding a mother-in-law suite or something in the backyard doesn't change anything, other than that would be perhaps a separate dwelling unit mm -hmm. back there for a resident on the property. This isn't for single family, but an accessory dwelling unit is a separate public hearing process of its own conditional use. And there's standards governing that in terms of occupancy of the main building. In other words, one of the requirements is that the owner of the property occupy the main dwelling, which is not the case here. But it doesn't help the personal care home request. It's still a seven-person licensed facility, whether it's in one building or two or three buildings. It's one facility. And that's what triggers the RM zoning and the condition use for just that facility. And then RM zoning would allow all these other uses in place of or in addition to 
what would be there as long as everything fits. So Matt, she still would have the hurdle if this was approved along with the conditional use, she still has that um, that hurdle of the square footage. Of the one acre minimum lot size right. for a group personal care home. So that's However, it is possible city council, it's sort of a backdoor approach, but they can mandate okay. you know, that it be that lot and that size. It's unorthodox, but it has been done. Can I follow Certainly. Yeah, I apologize. I'm, I'm did I hear you say that if these three townhouses join together, mm -hmm. it would facilitate seven? No. Mm -hmm. That's not what you said. No. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense to me. You have seven kids, but everyone's on the way. Yeah, a family with seven children is a whole different thing. But a townhouse of three dwelling units is allowed in our end zoning on this size property. I think he was making the point that no matter how it was configured, whether it was three condos or one home, the maximum number of people allowed would only be six as it stands now. If it was approved through conditional use to increase from four to six okay. as a personal care home. Okay. If the use of the property is personal care home, okay. not dwelling use. <clears throat> Now, I have a question, please. Um, <laughs> are you finished with your <laughs> <laughs> So, I just want to understand the technical thing. So, if the zoning remains R10, mm -hmm. I'm trying to make a determination. Would the conditional use request apply or not apply? The current conditional use that's on the property, approval for four, is live and active, all is good. Even with a zoning change or without a zoning change. It's based on the prior approval. If the zoning stays R10, the applicant is eligible for up to six persons in a personal care home. That keeps it in the family size category, not in the group category. That is allowable in the R10 zoning. But a conditional use requesting more than six would not... It requires also a zoning change. Oh, that requires a zoning change. Correct. That's why the applicant is requesting not only the conditional use to increase up to seven, but because of the seven, they have to also request a zoning change to at least an RM. Okay. Yeah, RM or higher, but the most that's allowed here is RM. But so maybe to sum it up, so if the zoning remains R10, then there is no conditional There is no conditional use for seven persons. Okay. Correct. Thank it's you. not eligible. So the applicant took an extra gamble and submitted a second application to go through at the same time in hopes that since it's the same body approving one or the other, that they just go through to the city council at one time rather than submit three applications and deal with two bodies. Mm -hmm. Think out loud. Not so, so if, if, if the zoning is passed and the conditional use is passed, is it still going to get a variance on the one acre? Unless the conditional use it sanctifies the one acre or less than one acre size. It's just poor practice to do that because it's not it really in the purview. They would have to make it a condition of approval of the conditional use. That would be the only way it could be done by city council. The recommendation to City Council in that case is to stay out of that arena and let the variances be dealt with like other variances through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Basically, he's saying he don't want to get in the business. <laughs> but City Council trumps Zoning Board of Appeals, so it's up to them if they want to go there. But that there's a lot of ifs in that scenario. But so, the first thing that has to be decided by the request is the result. Which will create spot zoning if it works. It creates one parcel of R10 in the start of R10. in a C of in a R10. C of, okay. And like we talked about before, if this were R10 zoned neighborhood, but you had duplexes and triplexes and all sorts of things in there right. that were grandfathered in from decades ago. So in other words, you had an R10 zoning pattern, but not an R10 land use pattern. Right. Then I think it would be a whole different animal. Right. 
the heat or the zoning pattern and the land use pattern are the same. Okay. All right. Any other questions for staff? Commissioner Franklin? Okay. All right. If not, then is there someone here tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request? Please come forward. State your name and address, please. here tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request, please come forward. No? All right, is there anyone here tonight who wishes to speak against this request? Please come forward. Anyone here wishing to speak against the request? If not, I'll turn it back over to the commissioners for discussion. And as a reminder by the chairman, we need two separate votes, one right. for the resigning, one for the conditional use. We've not heard any. It's been fully advertised, no feedback from the neighborhood, same as last fall, there was no feedback. But you have some letters of support in your packet, mm -hmm. just like last fall. Again, the success reached out to like a study agency for clarification on some of this? 
Did not hear back. Yeah, I noticed there's several letters of support um, in the package. Okay. All right, well, if we don't have any more discussion, then I will call for a vote. A motion, I'm sorry, on the vote. We'll vote on the motion. Somebody's got to step up. I recommend on VA 2019 Jackson State on the rezoning. I know there's going to be a spot of looking at the recommendation and what the engineers and everybody said. I recommend approval. Okay, one question, Matt. Will, he, will his motion cover both? No. Okay, we'll do it first, first okay, vote needs to be on the rezoning okay. by itself. All right. Okay, so we have a motion for um, approval. Do I have the, a second? Of the rezoning. Of the rezoning, right, which is the VA 2019-06. Do we have a second on that motion? All right, we have a second by Commissioner Sauls. All right, any discussion on that motion? Madam Chair, I would just like to say that uh, I would like for this to go through this afternoon's request to go through, but based on staff's report uh, and the land use issues that we rule on, I'm not sure how I can support the motion. Although I'm, one side of me says I would really like to see this happen. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like the people are doing a good job, but it's beyond my knowledge, but I, I would hope that if it doesn't happen, they can find a way of working through that department to maybe do something because I think it's a good call. But I'm not sure I can support it. Motion based on what we are asked to do at this commission. That's correct. It is in land use. All right, so we have a motion for approval, seconded, um, and we've had discussion. If there's no other discussion, then I'll now call for the vote. All those wishing to vote in favor of the motion, raise your right hand, please. All those voting against, raise your right hand. Oh, y'all did. So you made a Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, I'm going to have to echo Commissioner Hightower's sentiments that um, I feel y'all are great people and you're doing amazing um, work, and um, I commend you for that. Not a lot of people that would step up and do what you guys are doing. Um, but I also know in protecting um, the zoning that we try, we need to try to stay away from split zoning and spot zoning. So um, for that reason, I'm going to vote against the motion. So that would carry five to four against. Right, so the motion okay. has failed. You need another motion. No. The mo okay. So this motion has failed uh, to approve. Yes. I make a motion on VA 2019-06 that we uh, agree with uh, staff's ruling for denial of the request. All right. We now have a motion to deny the request. Do I have a second on that? I second that. Okay. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those voting in favor of the motion to deny this request, please raise your right hand. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much, right? All those voting against the motion, raise your right hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to vote in favor of Commissioner Franklin's motion that we deny the request. So that is five to four against. Whew, that was complicated. Given that, then we won't need to move forward or we do Go need ahead. to. Go ahead. I think okay. City Council would appreciate a recommendation on each of the okay. requests. All right. 